Hi everybody, we are going to pick up where we left off. We've got our gearbox, it's basically assembled at this point, minus the clutch stuff, which is still on its way. So uh, I can't show you that yet, we've got a little bit more to do. But we're at a point where we can test the gearbox. Now, this is important, especially if you've got an overdrive on the back of your unit. Uh, it, but what you really should do is spin up the gearbox, shift through all the gears, turn the overdrive on and off, assuming you have one. If you don't, you just don't hit that part, of course. But, uh, you want to shift it through all the gears, make sure that it's filled with fluid, make sure there are no leaks, make sure there's no weird noises that, that aren't expected. Uh, that's what you really want to do before you put it in the car. Now, pro tip, you can go the route that I've gone and get a, an electric motor. Uh, we can build a stand for it. Uh, but that involves some expense, and you might have a half-inch drill lying around. Uh, if you do, you can put a half-inch drill on the input shaft, and you can spin it. Uh, if you have overdrive especially, make sure you are not spinning it the, the incorrect direction. Uh, looking at your gearbox, you're, you're going to want to spin it this way, right? So if you're looking at the bell housing from outside, it's going to spin clockwise. If you're looking at the direction that the engine spins, looking at the flywheel, that's going to be counterclockwise. So you want to make sure that it's spinning in the correct direction. And the reason behind that is that if you don't, you could potentially grenade the overdrive. So make sure that you're spinning in the correct direction or you're going to break something. But anyway, uh, the reason behind building a test stand is because then we can have it running for a bit longer. You can put it on a drill, but you're really only going to be able to spin it up and make sure that it doesn't make any noise initially. It's not going to let the parts wear in. It's not going to let anything get hot. Uh, it's not really going to be effective at checking for leaks. So what you really want to do is build this test stand if you're inclined to go that far and make sure that everything is going to continue to work properly for 20, 30 minutes, and then you can feel more secure that you can put it in the car. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is kind of lay everything out. Uh, this board is left over from a desk that I threw out. It's about 40 inches long. Now you really only need about 36 for the Spitfire gearbox. Uh, if you're dealing with TR6 stuff, uh, at least 40 inches, probably closer to 43, 44, or something like that will be more than enough room. So uh, remember, you can have pieces hanging off the edge too. And you also want it to be wide enough because as the motor turns on and you spin up your transmission, it's introducing some torques and you don't want anything to roll right off of the bench. So kind of get a feel for where the parts are going to be. My plan is to have this. I'm going to build a base so that I can raise and lower it. Have the gearbox bolted on the front here and then have a piece at the back that will kind of hold it up. That could just be a, a 2x4 that we bolt down to the, to the board here. And that's technically all you really need. We can connect the, the motor to the gearbox with a piece of rubber hose. Uh, just make sure that you clamp it down and that you have an appropriate size. And that's kind of the general idea. So I'm going to move forward with that. Let's go to the next step. We'll level this later, but be careful not to put anything underneath the solenoid. Otherwise, you take the chance that you're going to damage it. You want to get the back close. Because your next goal is to get this as level as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect unless you're building like a, a specific coupling to go to the motor. But if you're using a rubber shaft, it just needs to be close. A little bit higher than this, that will do the trick.
I'll give you an idea of what I'm doing here. These two holes are drilled so that the motor sits on top of this. Uh, this I'll explain in a moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of lag screws right around here. But I'm not going to screw them in all the way. And by unthreading them, I can make this piece sit higher. By threading them in farther, I can make it sit lower. It's basically going to rest on these lag screws uh, as if they were four feet. There's two here and then two on an, on an identical panel because there's four bolts that hold the motor together. Uh, now, because that's not going to be particularly stable, it's going to wobble around, right? That's what this bracket is for. I'm going to tighten this just enough to make sure that it holds everything down, uh, that there's a little bit of tension on it, but the main weight is going to be resting on the feet. So I'll get some close-ups of that when it's done. four lag screws and I will be able to here let's put the rest together with the four lag screws I can use those as feet and I will be able to raise and lower by threading them in and out and then this is actually a little bit low uh, these pieces are really just meant to hold it in place so that it doesn't walk around on the feet. Uh, but that's really all you need. Uh, we're gonna... Okay, this gives you a better idea. Um, there's another uh, lag screw that'll go in here, but again, I'm just going to hand tighten that. But in the meantime, what we can do is either tighten or loosen each of the lag screws. And as you tighten or loosen them, it will move the electric motor up and down. So you can center it and make sure that it's even with the gearbox. Okay, let me take you through the setup that I've got here. So I've got an electric motor, uh, which is connected to the gearbox through a flexible coupling. Uh, you can buy these online, just honestly do a Google search for flexible coupling uh, and you type in the diameter of whatever the shaft is on the motor. Most of these are five-eighths of an inch, but uh, your motor might be different. You can find used motors, you can get new ones, doesn't matter. Uh, you could also use a drill for this purpose, uh, but if you get a drill that's not heavy-duty enough, it's going to get really hot and you're going to destroy your drill. So uh, I recommend using a motor if you're going to build a test stand, but if you just want to spin it up, or especially if you don't have overdrive, that's a little bit less critical. Uh, the flexible joint is there because I have uh, some bolts underneath this piece of wood and there are four of them and that's meant so that I can uh, rotate the, the electric motor back and forth or raise it on one side or the other. These two lag screws are really just here to put a little bit of tension on it and keep it from wobbling around, but it's resting on these feet. Uh, you could use furniture leveling feet, anything like that. But that's important because if it's not level, uh, you're going to have the shafts that aren't in parallel or the angles are going to be off and it's going to destroy whatever coupling you make. Uh, you could damage something potentially. So uh, that's why just as an extra security precaution because I don't have this perfect uh, because I can't. I have a flexible coupling. It's got a plastic piece in the middle that uh, will take some of the uh, misalignment. Anyway, moving farther back, I've hooked up a speedometer gauge, uh, as it would be. I just used a short cable. This is technically a tack cable, but it's okay. Same connection. The idea behind this is I want to see if the overdrive is working. So when I turn the motor on, I'm going to have a speed. I don't know what that speed is. It's based on how many RPMs, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, what I want to see is when I switch the overdrive on, does the speed go up? If it does, the overdrive is working. If it doesn't, obviously it's not and there's something wrong. And to help find out what's wrong, uh, I have this pressure gauge, uh, which you can buy online. I'll, I'll, if you are curious about it, ask me. Uh, but uh, you basically just buy a pressure gauge. You'll need some, some adapter fitting so that it fits into the uh, overdrive correctly. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're generating enough pressure. 
uh, that it doesn't drop off. So just watch, make sure it's consistent. I like to run these on the test stand for a little while, let it get hot, uh, make sure there's no leaks, make sure it stays working before you go put it in the car. Uh, and then the rest of this you recognize from earlier in the video. Uh, I've got a battery charger because it will deliver 12 volts to the solenoid which will activate it and I have uh, it's connected to the inhibitor switch here as well so that if I'm not in third or fourth gear the overdrive should not work. Uh, so that's all important stuff you want to make sure that it's uh, not only working but you want to make sure that it's appropriately not working when it's not supposed to be. The only other piece that I've got is back at this end. It's a variable speed switch so that I can control the speed of the motor. Uh, this motor spins at almost 3500 RPM. It might be a little bit slower because it's driving quite a lot of, uh, of uh, weight around with the transmission, but uh, I figure that switch will help me to uh, control the speed. I can check the RPM. Um, guys that's it I hope this was helpful uh, what you saw was I shifted through all four gears uh, you want to listen for any sort of grinding noises that's an indication that your synchro rings aren't uh, working appropriately uh, but even at higher RPMs we had barely any any noise at all uh, so it's shifting smoothly that's good and then the overdrive should only work in gears where it's supposed to work in. With this gearbox, that's third and fourth. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you've got questions, post them in the comments below. Thank you, guys.